So here's the thing about doing the top 10 power forwards of this season. There are a whole bunch of dudes who would typically be here who for whatever reason are not. Like Blake has been hurt and not that good. Draymond's offense has been really bad. John Collins got suspended 25 games. Markkanen has been maybe the most disappointing player in the league. And Perzingis has been up and down recovering from his injury. And there's even a couple of disclaimers after all those dudes. Um, I would consider Sabonis to still be a center, even if when he and Turner play together, he's the power forward, because Sabonis still plays a lot of minutes without Miles Turner, where he is, of course, the five. LaMarcus Aldridge is a center. He's not a power forward. Montrez, center, not a power forward. I mean, Serge Ibaka is a center at this point. He's not really a four. Like, the four position is pretty stripped down for this list. And as a result, there are quite a few deep cuts. Well, not super deep cuts. I mean, you're all going to know who these dudes are, but it's it's kind of like, oh, we're going to that level of player to round out a top 10. Another part of this is also, like I said in the small forward video, it's tough to know who's playing what position. So maybe some of the dudes I had in the three video you'd have in this one, it's whatever. Anyway, we're going to do the top three, and then after that... I don't know if there's a huge distinction between guys. Um, Giannis, number one. Anthony Davis, number two. Pascal Siakam, number three. I think that's pretty straightforward. Siakam has missed some time, but even so, I don't think anybody else on here really has a case over him like that. Giannis has been the best player in the regular season to me. I mean, the crazy thing about Giannis is he's putting up all the numbers he is, and he's playing like 30 minutes a game. Yeah, he's averaging 30.8 minutes, which is actually the second least amount of minutes he's ever played, and he's averaging 30, 13, and 5.5 five and assists. And his threes have been getting a little better, so... Yeah, his free throws are still freaking me out a little bit. So there's that. Anthony Davis, I mean, I know some people might want to put AD at center, but I think he's played the majority of his time at power forward this season. Uh, probably the defensive player of the year. I think it's between him and Gobert right now. He's everything the Lakers wanted him to be. There's a reason they traded all that stuff for him. And yeah, Siakam at number three, dude walked in shooting threes with defenders in his face and being the main dude in the Raptors offense. And he has been back for three games now. Hasn't really killed it in either of the three, although the second game against the Thunder was probably the best one. But he'll be fine. He'll get back to the... 20 point scoring sometimes 30 or 40 point scoring uh, power forward who occasionally looks like a two guard for them anyway now when I name all the rest of the dudes it's not going to be like like Gallo is number 4 and Millsap is number 10 I don't think that means Gallo has been significantly better than Millsap this season I think it's just the, the order in which I wrote down their names <laughs> to be honest so Gallo at number 4 It'll be interesting to see if OKC moves him. I mean, it seems like they're going to kind of throw an audible and be like, wait a minute, we're kind of good. Maybe we should just ride this season out and see how far we can go. I mean, if they wanted to do that, then I think we could see them taking on, like, another shooter off the bench to take up some of the, like, Terrence Ferguson minutes and whoever else. Number five, Jaron Jackson Jr., He's played four and five this season. I think he's played a little bit more power forward. He's got a lot of lineup uh, minutes with uh, Valanchunas. Like, you look at their most used lineup in 354 minutes this season. He's played in the starting five, which has Valanchunas. The next lineup that doesn't have Valanchunas has played 71 minutes, so... I feel pretty good saying he spent more of his time at power forward than center. He has had a bit of a foul problem, but even among that, Jaron has still managed to be pretty damn good. I mean, 18 points. His rebounding is still not great. It's five a game, but again, he is playing a decent amount of time at the four. And his minutes are only at 28 because those fouls are still kind of hurting him, but even so, he is making it work, and the Grizzlies are really fun. Really, really fun. I mean, we look at his fouls lately. There's still a few foul outs here and there. There's at least one game in there with five. But he's also cleaned it up a little. He had three against Cleveland, three against the Warriors, three against the Suns. So he's figuring it out as he goes. And then defensively, of course, he's still pretty legit. Who do I have next? 
uh, Kevin Love. Um, Kevin Love has not been quiet in this season, is one way to put it. Who knows if he actually gets his wish of being moved out of Cleveland. I don't know what his market really is. But in terms of his offensive game, Kevin Love's been pretty legit. 17 points, 36% on six threes a game. True shooting percentage of 60%. His playmaking is not to where it was back in the Minnesota days. I don't know if he simply doesn't have it like that anymore or if he's just not getting the ball enough with Sexton and Garland there. Garland has been a little better, by the way, and if he keeps it up, maybe I'll do a second video on him. Maybe I just should anyway because sometimes it gets tough to think about things to talk about when you're this deep into the season, you know? It's like that that gray area where the, 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 the deadline is looming, but it's not here just yet. Anyway, I'm digressing. Next, I'm, I'm actually putting him in here, uh, Davis Bertans. If I was going to objectively look at who to place where, he might be number 10. But I just decided to write names down. He's been one of the better offensive players in the league this season. Even though he's averaging 15 points a game. But... It's his threat from outside is insane, man. Like, he's shooting 43% on nine threes a game, okay? His true shooting is 62%. The Wizards are horrible, and the advanced stats still consider him to be a positive while recognizing that he's basically a negative on defense. I mean, the Wizards are like 12 points better when he's in the game versus not in the game. He just, like, he's just got to be here, even if a lot of his offense is just simply standing there and forcing the defense to just stay glued to him, but... There's a lot of value in that, so Davis Bertans. This next one might show to you just how not loaded the power forward thing is with so many guys out of it. Um, I've got Horford next. Horford has been a disappointment for Philly. Not getting the ball enough, things like that. Even so, I mean, the on-off numbers are still really good, and when he's out there without Embiid and he's playing center... The Sixers are good, so in a way he's like solved a lot of the problems that they signed him to solve, but at the same time it's been like still not great. And I think it's mainly because of the contract. I mean, Horford has still been a positive this season, it's just for what they're giving him and what he is providing. It's like, like did we really need to give you either a max or close to a max to basically just make us respectable without Embiid? and make us a little more interesting when Embiid's in the game. Like, no, you could have gotten somebody for $12 million a season who could have done that for you, you know? But with all that being said, I think if Horford is great defensively in the playoffs, I think it makes a lot of that contract worth it. Like, if Giannis, which and Philly's got... They're the weirdest team in the league, so they could lose in round one, they could go all the way to the finals. But... If Giannis is having a really tough time getting by Horford or whoever in in a conference final series or potentially a round two, depending on where Philly finishes, then I feel like Horford's contract ends up being worth it if they win that series. If they don't, then it probably looks bad in the end. Who do I have next? I have a guy who's going to be out for a while, uh, Jonathan Isaac, because his defense was that good. And you could argue he's been like a three a lot for them. This is another one of those where I don't really know. Like, who's actually the three and who's actually the four on on the magic between Gordon and Isaac? Take your pick as far as I'm concerned. And those two have played a lot of minutes together. So I just decided to consider Isaac a four. Um, You know, if he didn't get hurt, he would be in the running. Not the running. I think he'd be the favorite for one of the all-defense forward spots, which probably would have pushed Giannis to the second team which I think would have been fine. Like, Isaac was really that good defensively for these guys before he got hurt. I mean, two and a half blocks, one and a half steals, and then a whole bunch of things that you could only catch if you were actually watching them. I mean, his offense didn't take, like, a huge jump. It got a little better. But his defense was just so damn good that I am going to put him here. And I spoiled the Millsap one earlier, so Millsap at number 10. You know, I've been thinking about my all-defense second team a little bit, and again, Isaac's injury makes it a little tougher, but I feel like Paul Millsap may have a quiet case for it because all of Denver's best defensive lineups feature Millsap. 
And it's kind of weird to say because I think you could argue that Millsap's best days on defense are behind him, but it's still been really, really effective when he's been in the game for these guys. And it's been worse when he hasn't. And I feel like that could be enough to, to put you in there for all defense, second team at one of the forward spots, especially if Isaac is... We don't know. I mean, who, who knows how many games he ends up playing this season. But back to Millsap, like... With him in the game, their defensive rating is 101, and without him, it's 109. So, yeah. Again, the the power forward list, not as star-studded as you might think, because there's so many dudes who are out of it for various reasons. But that will do it.